guys! I am going to be talking about my presentation essay in this video, and like I said before, I decided to write about how blind belief affects the YouTube comments space. In the time that I've been observing YouTube, I've noticed that one, there's always positive comments and negative comments, and two, there seems to be a really strong correlation between how a video has gone viral and how it's seen in the public eye. So getting right into the bulk of my paper, one of my main points in my essay is that it's really easy to let the majority opinion affect your own opinion on a lot of things. Booth describes dogmatism as the unquestioning faith in certain assertions, and negative dogmatic attitudes often happen when a video goes viral for all the wrong reasons. For instance, take Rebecca Black. She got famous for making a ridiculous video and using entirely too much autotune. When that video was released, she got bashed so much for it that they actually had to take the video down for a couple months to let the internet calm down for a second. And today, the video still has a 70% dislike ratio. One reason as to why people reacted the way they did to Rebecca Black's video could have to do with a bad case of negative dogmatism in the YouTube community. Here's where the concept of blind ascent comes in. Booth explains blind ascent as the belief in an ideal solely because you trust in an authoritative figure. So, going back to the case where everybody hates Rebecca Black, blind descent can be a huge reason as to why people don't like her, and that can turn into bad dogmatism when people start bashing on other people for actually liking her song. Although there wasn't one authoritative figure that explicitly said, I want you to hate Rebecca Black, the bandwagon effect in this case was the authoritative figure because everyone just wants to fit in even if it is at the expense of a 13 year old girl. To this day, people are still commenting on Friday, and among the flurries of hate comments that are still happening, I actually found a comment that I think validates my argument. A user named Nessbound says, Honestly, I don't understand why people hate this song. The only thing I can think of is because others hate it, so they just follow them and hate it too. Now, I don't think that this is the only reason, because I don't find it hard to believe that there are some people out there who genuinely don't think that Rebecca Black is a good singer, and that's fine. But three years later, and the bandwagoners are still commenting on this video with some pretty creative insults. But the good news is that people like Nessbound here are realizing just how much of an impact viral videos have on our ability to think for ourselves and that's really apparent in the Friday video. Now that we've covered how dogmatism can go all wrong, let me give you some food for thought. Is dogmatism still bad if it leads to a positive and supportive environment? From my observations, it seems like dogmatism holds the connotation of narrow-mindedness, which I think is unfair and let me explain why. Because YouTube runs on advertisements, the goal of a YouTuber is to gain popularity in order to gain more subscribers, and in this sense, YouTube runs on the dogmatism of their fans. The system is good for YouTube as well as people whose job it is to make YouTube videos. So what happens when dogmatism leads to a positive situation like this? One specific case worth mentioning is the case of Thatcher Joe and Zoella. These two YouTubers are siblings, however, Zoella got her start on YouTube earlier than Joe did. Because of this, a lot of people argue that the reason why Joe became famous had a lot to do with his sister. And to some degree, this is true. Because Zoe was already famous on YouTube, fangirls who were already crazy about her now had an attractive male version to fawn over. Because she already had an authoritative role on YouTube as a famous YouTuber, her fans automatically believed that her brother had the same talent that she did. It's kind of like when you buy things from the same brand because the last thing you owned from them worked great. Anyway, even though Joe may be talented, his connection with his sister definitely has an impact on how he's seen in the YouTube community. Which leads us to another question though. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Now this is the part where I break down the stereotype of dogmatism. Now, Elbow describes dogmatists as someone who is stuck in one position in a very naive way. However, I don't think the word naive really well describes the YouTube community. Yes, fans may be a little bit overenthusiastic when it comes to their favorite YouTubers. However, they're not naive for wanting the best for their celebrity crushes. So I'm going to say straight up right now that I think Booth and Elbow are completely wrong and that there is more than just one kind of dogmatist. Dogmatism that comes from supporting a celebrity, for example, doesn't lead to a narrow perception. It doesn't really do anything except for let people fangirl about Leonardo DiCaprio. 
Instead of trying to avoid dogmatism altogether, like Booth and Elbow suggest, the best approach would be to try to avoid cases of bad dogmatism while encouraging healthy dogmatism. To do this, it's necessary to create a place where you feel safe from the trolls and the haters, and Pratt describes these places as imaginary communities, which is a community where you don't actually know the people that you're in a community with, and safe houses where it's safe to talk about whatever you want to talk about. For example, in Michelle Fon's video about long-distance relationships, a user named Madison Shea posted saying, I came here because I need advice from anyone reading this. This is a prime example of how safe houses work in the YouTube community. People seek out videos that relate to their current life situations, and in the comments of those videos, they ask other people who may be currently going through or having already gone through the same situation that they're going through right now. This is a really healthy outlet for a lot of people, and it serves as an example of how healthy dogmatism can lead to some really good situations for a lot of people. Although it's true that some dogmatists are narrow-minded, I think it's way too much of a generalization to say that all dogmatists are like that. While dogmatism that leads to hurting others should be avoided, healthy dogmatism is a concept that should be encouraged and even celebrated. And that is it for my presentation essay. I know this was a long video, so thank you for sticking around, and I will see you next time!